Hi, it's Carl Pierre, and welcome back to ENTP Life. I'm here in Carmel, New York, which is, I guess, part of Putnam County, Upper New York. It's maybe, I don't know, about an hour outside of New York City. I'm checking out a uh, foreclosure property with my real estate agent today. It's something that he found. Uh, he's actually one of my guys. He's always out looking for properties for me. Um, and it's a really good relationship. He understands exactly what it is that I'm looking for. He's using my spreadsheet. If you don't have my spreadsheet already, please uh, leave comments in the comment section below. Essentially, you just have to be a subscriber to both my Instagram and to my YouTube channel, and I'll email that right on over to you so you could kind of use it. You're also gonna wanna check out that video that I did on how to use the spreadsheet and how to analyze the deal so that you know that the deal is good for you. So I trained him on the spreadsheet. Um, he's constantly looking for deals. This deal back here actually fit the uh, requirements. So I'm gonna give it a walk on uh, or a walkthrough. And uh, from there, I'll get a sense of whether or not his assessment of how much the renovation is gonna cost is in line with my assessment. And if it is, then we'll move forward. At times what I do is I might have him meet up with uh, one of my contractors and my contractor could tell him the same thing, how much it's gonna cost. But I have my contractor on another job and I actually wanted to come see this one for myself since I haven't invested out here in Carmel. But we're gonna go on inside, check it out, and give you a complete overview. Actually, <clears throat> we're gonna do an overview of the exterior. I'm gonna point out a few things that I'm seeing, and then we'll go on inside. Let's check it out. So the first thing that I'm noticing is that the house is on a hill with like a fairly steep driveway to the main road. It's set back far enough from the main road that I, it's not that you know awful but it is a main road and that might affect the overall appraisal price. Now, coming on into the house, <clears throat> or to the actual house, here's my uh, Ferrari. Um, <laughs> it seems to be three levels, right? So there seems to be like a finished attic level, which is good, this mid-level, and the ground level. Um, it's about 20 feet from front to back. So it's more of a wide format than it is kind of like a long in-line house. So it's about 20 feet there, and maybe the front of the house is about, I don't know, 30 feet. So each floor is gonna be about 600 square feet based on that just rough estimate. So this is probably like an 1800 square foot home. Um, things that I see off the bat is we've got, uh, you know, brick, which is pretty good. So that's you know, less to maintain, less to worry about. The exterior isn't that bad. Um, we've got some gutters missing, uh, soffits that need to be tuned up right over there. It's kind of falling apart. Um, <clears throat> the walkway stops here, and then it's just some organic debris, uh, so the walkway would have to be continued on. A lot of trees nearby the house, and what you're seeing is because of all of the uh, shading, you get this moss on the shingles. The shingles don't look that old, but you got this moss, so I'm probably going to be looking to trim back some of these trees to get some more direct sunlight into the house. Going around the side here, just, I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's like a little cabin house. I, I don't know if that, if that even belongs to the property. So I'd have to survey the property to kind of determine exactly what that is. Um, and exactly where the property line ends. And since this is kind of funky and on a hill, I'm definitely gonna want to get a survey on this purchase just to know what I'm dealing with. Um, looking up, this seems to have a, a, a real functional chimney. So I'll see what that looks like on the inside. Um, once again, the gutters are full of debris, Not nothing to really worry about. This tree here concerns me a bit. Probably gonna cut that. Um, you know, there is growing into this little bit of foundation there or like that retainer wall and will continue to, to do damage to the house as it, as it grows. So I'd be looking to, to get rid of that for sure. For sure, for sure. So that tree's going down just to, to curb that. And if I swing back around here, take a look at these gutters in the back, gutters falling off. So, minor exterior work, not much. I'd probably estimate the exterior is just for the, for the exterior of the house. I'd probably just earmark like $2,000 for it. Um, and then the tree cutting is what is probably gonna run you 
a little extra. We got some rot here around the windows. The windows aren't bad, but that's something I'm gonna have to take care of. It could be termites, most likely, because it's all down by the ground, or it could just be moisture and poor drainage. But, uh, yep. You've got some rot down there, but these are kind of normal wear and tear items. Um, nothing else that I'm really seeing on the exterior that's too alarming to me. Um, not sure what this house is running on. Oh wow, this is kind of, I guess a little storage area in the rear. I don't know what to make of it, but it's a retainer wall and a little bit of storage. It maybe keeps some moisture off of the foundation. Um, but just gonna clear that out. You can't really see, it's just some crap back there. Clear that out. It's maybe additional storage, like a little shed. And we're going inside. So coming in off the side door, we've got this kind of galley style kitchen and dining room. Um, first impressions is it's not that bad, but some concerning things. Uh, smells pretty wet in here and it looks like some moisture is getting in from here and kind of rotting this area out and back here maybe from the shed. Uh, so these are things that would have to get uh, replaced. Probably keep the kitchen in kind. This window faces that, that area that I was showing that was in the uh, shed area. Um, Coming on back, they have like a central vacuum system. Uh, this bathroom here, one full bathroom on the first floor. It's a gut job. Uh, there's nothing salvageable here. I keep the same layout. But <laughs> they got they got a dual shower. I mean, this is for the love making right here. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Okay, and then here's like the first level, kind of like, I don't know what to call this, a, a mud room or semi living room. Has this wood burning stove. It's just eating up space. Um, I'd get rid of that. The walls and panels aren't in that bad shape. I'd probably strip off the panels, maybe do some wains coating just to keep with the same theme. The walls are in pretty decent shape. Wood floors so far throughout different styles of floor, but wood nonetheless. Just refinish that baseboard heating. And is this electric or? Yeah, I think there. It's an electric baseboard. Seems to be that way, because I didn't see any oil tank on the house. So. Yeah, I think it's electric in here. Cause I don't see any, any pipes coming up. Uh, so this is another bedroom. Doesn't seem to have wood floors in here. It just discontinues, goes to carpet. Condition is fine. It got this dental, dental molding, which I don't like. So I'd probably change it out to a regular crown and just remove it. Another bathroom, master bath, has some pretty good size. Laundry room, hot water heater, electric. Uh, second panel or sub panel. So this bathroom would get killed and redone. So that's two bathrooms. Retile, yeah. Yeah, I completely redo this bathroom, but it's a nice size, so that has some promise. Doors are in pretty good shape. Now let's go to the third floor, see what's up here. Third floor, not so bad either. Um, recess lighting throughout, no leaks here. Uh, Carpet, see what's underneath this carpet, nothing. So it's just carpet up here. So we can either try to match the floors downstairs with some engineered hardwood 
or whatever. I think what I would do for some privacy in this other bedroom is I close off this wall. So you just come up the stairs here. There'd be a wall here, opens into this bedroom, and then this other bedroom. So this is three bedrooms and some damage here. Uh, a little bit of a balcony that does not exist, which is kind of strange. Um, and then there is uh, this roof rot. So most likely new roof is needed um, or it could just be this area. Hopefully it's, I only see the leaks over there. Some leaks over here it could be full gutters, um, a little bit of mold. So that roof is gonna have to get looked at. So that's another big ticket item. Um, cool thing is the plumbing shouldn't be too shot. Probably just a few cracks. Electric heat sucks. Maybe, I don't know, there's not much sun out here, but I would think to do, uh, I think I, I would do, try to get solar to kind of hedge people's concerns. But that's pretty much it. There is no basement, just a little storage area under the stairs. The other exit and the main panel, 200 amps. You know, they did what they did here. So that just needs to be finessed to look better. Um, you know, inside, I, I would rate this like a for the interior work two bathrooms, redo a kitchen, redo the floors that are salvageable. Um, they changed the route, so I'd probably go with a dark finish, just so it's not so noticeable. Got the bathrooms, so that's two bathrooms. A kitchen, roof, big ticket item, and paint, and whatever the exterior works are. So I'm gonna give you a synopsis after I digest this for a bit. And uh, that's it for the inside. To recap this deal, there's a few things for me to consider. The first is whether or not I'm gonna fix and flip this property or use the burst strategy and fix and hold this property. So the things that I'm really looking at is what's the likelihood that this property is going to sell? What's the likelihood that it's gonna rent? How much is it gonna cash flow? And ultimately what's gonna be the best fit for me? I really prefer to keep multifamily properties because that offsets exactly how much am I risking when I'm renting that property out? How quickly is it going to rent? And if a tenant were to default and stop paying, how much is that going to affect me, right? So that's something that I, I take into consideration when I'm renting and what is a, and how quick can I rent the property out? The same thing when I'm looking to flip, how long is it gonna take for me to sell this property? The average is around seven months from beginning to end from the time that I buy it to the time that I exit. Sometimes it goes as far as eight or nine months when people are trying to secure their mortgages and, and it gets delayed in that sort of way. We're now in the month of October and we're moving into the winter, which I kind of like because I'm able to finish a property out during the winter months when things are really slow and have that part property listed in the beginning of the spring or like the end of the winter. So if it's listed in, in February, people are starting to get active again, or even listed in January, where people are starting to get active again after the holidays. So here's some things to consider. If I were to keep this property as a rental, I wouldn't have to necessarily overhaul it to flipping standards, right? I need to get it livable, I need to get it functional. So let's go through the calculations for that. Now, <clears throat> the purchase price for this property is $145,000, which is fair because the after repair values in the area are around $350,000 for a similar type house. So that's pretty good. So I'm getting that house at less than 50% of the ARV. Now I need to kind of put in the, the, uh, <clears throat> the calculations for how much it's gonna to cost to actually repair this house so I can see where I fall in the spectrum of things. So if I'm gonna repair it so that it's to rental standards, I'm not gonna demo out that kitchen. I'm going to actually repair the kitchen to the best of my abilities, clean it up. So for that, let's just estimate around uh, 3,500 because I'm gonna do some painting, I'm gonna finish the floors, I might change out the countertops, put a backsplash up because if you look back at the video, there was no backsplash, that, that back panel um, was destroyed. Uh, you might have to open it up to get at the plumbing. 
So I'm probably gonna go back over with the black backsplash. Um, I have to fix that little damage uh, in the corner and maybe even fix the, the cabinets that are there. So $3,500 I'm budgeting for the kitchen. For the rest of the house, just doing the paint job, getting it to look clean, I could probably budget 4,000 for that because people, people tend to think of painting a house as being cheap. Painting a house is not cheap, especially if you're going with like a three color uh, uh, model where the walls are one color, your molding and your doors are another color and your ceiling is like flat white. That is expensive because it takes a lot of time to do it right. So I want to budget about a week of my team's time, maybe three guys doing the job and a few buckets of, of paint to get that done. So $4,000 is what I'm estimating for a paint job. Now the roof and the gutters, um, to think about that, if I go with patching the roof so that once again, it's functional um, and it's not leaking anymore, I think I pro could probably do the patch job for less than $5,000 of patch and the gutters and the sockets. So let me just put that as $5,000. I have one bathroom that's a complete gut job, the one on the first floor that has to be completely replaced. And I'm gonna budget that at $4,000. So, so far I'm at $1,650 for, for the job as proposed. And the last tidbits, the carpet, replacing the carpet upstairs, uh, replacing the carpet in the master bedroom. I would say that I can budget about $1,500 for that and maybe a quick sanding of the floors that are that are there and revarnishing them. Probably gonna pay about a dollar to a dollar fifty a square foot. And that's less than a thousand square feet that are affected. So another 1500 there for floors. So with that being said, that takes my budget to $19,500. I'm gonna add another 15% or so just for some of the incidentals, cutting down the trees, getting the house cleaned up. As a matter of fact, I'll add $5,000 for that. So that's 24, five. So we could round up to an even $25,000 for the sake of easy math. And that's gonna put us at $170,000 for this project to buy it and to repair it as a rental. So when we're looking at the math there, remember what you wanna do is how much is that in relation to the asset repair value. When you're buying a house that you're going to renovate for any purpose, whether you're gonna flip it or you're gonna rent it, you wanna make sure that the total cost of that project falls below 70% of the asset repair value. So if you take $170,000, you divide that by the asset repair value of $350,000 that I'm estimating for the area, that puts us at 0.48, that's 50% of the market value. So when I when I refi this property, I'm going to be able to refi this property for that's three hundred fifty thousand dollars times 0.7. I'll be able to cash out two hundred and forty five thousand dollars. So that leaves me already on the rental side with a potential profit point. And this is just a rough number; it's not including fees and, and all that sort of thing. But with a potential profit point of seventy five thousand dollars, that one seventy minus the 245 is gonna leave me with $75,000 as a potential cash out profit point, which is really good. Now, if we were to go a little further and say, hey, we, gotta, we have to repair this property to get it to flipping standards, we're gonna add just a little bit more money to that, okay? We're gonna have the same budget of the, 20, uh, the 25,000, except we're gonna to add to that for nicer finishings and, and more work that we're gonna do because a home buyer is looking to move into that property and live in that property for life, right? It's a lot different than someone who's renting. The psychology of a, of a tenant is, I'm gonna eventually go and buy a house one day and I'm only here temporarily. So they're a little more forgiving of certain things, right? The older kitchen, it's functional, it's clean, it's gonna work for me, not that big of a deal. A buyer is gonna look at that kitchen and say, oh, I'm gonna to wanna to upgrade it, that's an extra 10,000, 15,000 that I'm not, I don't wanna to have to pay out of my pocket in the next two or three years, right? So when you're ever you're flipping a house, think about what is the psychology of a buyer? That's their, supposed to be their home for, for the rest of their life, a 30 year mortgage, so again, they're committed to this, to this property. So they kind of want things to be as close to perfect or whatever perfect is in their mind, right? So the first example is $25,000 to get the house livable, right? So that it's in rentable standards. But if I'm gonna make the kitchen nicer, 
I already budgeted $3,500 or so for that kitchen. But if I want to finish it to the typical standard that I do in most of my properties, so even, even this house here, um, it's going to be around $10,000 $10, or so, just, just a ballpark, right, to, to finish a kitchen of that size. So I'm going to add 7,000 to that 25,000, right? So it takes me to 32,000. If I was going to redo that roof after ripping up the shingles, figuring out which boards I'm going to replace. Remember the house is only 600 square feet. So the roof is going to be maybe 900 square feet when you, when you figure in the, uh, the peak. So I could probably do that roof shingles, replacing the boards, uh, in entirety for about $10,000, not, not replacing all the boards, but patching up the boards. So we've already spent some money on repairing the roof. I'd add about another $7,000 to that budget. If we were going to do a complete strip and adjusting the boards. And I only think it's that section that's rotted out because the rest of the, the rest of the home wasn't showing evidence of leaking. So we're going to add $7,000 for that. The master bedroom. Uh, had its master bath, that master bathroom is dated. I can redo that bathroom for $5,000. So we're gonna add that. Right now we're at $44,000 total. The last thing that I would do to try to improve the overall look and feel of the property is to get the floors to be consistent throughout. So that's 1,800 square feet. I'm gonna estimate around $4 or so to, to replace the existing floor, engineered hardwood floors. That's giving myself about a $2 budget for the floors, the engineered hardwood floors. That's around what I what I spend, like $2 to $2.20. And then another $2 or so a square foot to have them installed. So we're looking at roughly $4 a square feet, let's put them up $4 a square foot <laughs> um, for a roughly 2,000 square foot home. That's going to be $8,000. And that takes us up to $52,000. Another thing that I might do to nicen up the house, it's a little more exterior work. So getting the, getting the grounds groomed a little more, um, maybe getting an area for like a, a barbecue grill or something else going on outside, really making sure the out exteriors are nice and, and presentable. So I'm gonna add another $5,000 just for some exterior upgrades. And that takes me a to to a total of $57,000 in repairs. So if we're looking at 145,000 as the purchase price and $57,000 for repairs, we're at $202,000 for a home that is going to be worth 350,000. So once we start taking into consideration the fees on the buy side, the carrying costs for hard money, taxes, et cetera, um, you're probably gonna lose around $30,000 in in just fees and 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 buy side costs and exit costs. So I'm going to add thirty thousand dollars to that, and we're at two hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars in comparison to three hundred and fifty thousand. So if you want to see where we're we're falling in against that seventy percent rule, we're going to just take the two hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars and divide it by three hundred and fifty thousand, and that leaves us at 0.66. So the ratio is good, whether we're buying it to, to, to rent it or buying it to flip it. Now, I personally like to keep my rentals because that, that entire equity that's sitting in the property goes on my balance sheet and makes my balance sheet that much stronger. I also should be able to cash flow this property because homes in the area are renting for like 3,000 to 3,200. So if I only have a $200,000 mortgage on $10,000 taxes, I'm looking at maybe a monthly bill of what, thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars um, if I'm if I'm gonna keep that property. So I actually might be a little more like closer to closer to two thousand. But I'm able to rent that property out for three thousand dollars a month. So I'm able to cash for about a thousand dollars. Now I might need some feedback from you guys to let me know what you would do in this situation. You can either cash out about seventy five thousand dollars or cash out close to $125,000 in either of those scenarios. But one is gonna allow you to keep earning about $1,000 a month, while the other option is a fixed earnings. So you're gonna get your money right up front, 120 grand or $75,000, which is not gonna be taxable because it's gonna be in the form of, of debt, right? Remember, when you cash out refinance, 
the profits that you're that you're seeing, the profits are not profits. It's actually debt, so it's not a taxable event. So would you do the the seventy five thousand dollars cash out with your thousand dollars a month for as long as you can rent that property out, or would you just say, hey, you know what? Let me move on. Let me get this property out of my life and pocket one hundred twenty five grand. You guys at home, let me know. Thank you again for joining me at UNTP Life. If you have any questions, please leave your questions in the comment section below. If you want me to go over the math of this a little more in another video, I want to hear back from you. Let me know in the comment section below. Once again, thank you for joining me. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscription button. I put out a new video every week that's discussing real estate or maybe one of my other interests, but it's predominantly real estate. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Thank you and see you the next time.